Hey, hey, how is everyone today? I hope you like our new setup for the lives and we got new chairs. We, we thought it was quite frustrating because we're the kilted coaches and every time we do a live at five, we're always like from the, the waist up. So we thought, right, okay, let's get some new chairs and actually we can sit in these chairs and we can show off the kilts while we're talking to you about health and well-being. So as this week is our live at five. We've been doing this for quite some time now. This is where we deliver a bit of a lesson, do a bit of a Q&A. And this week is all about how to work around injuries or if you have lasting niggles that just don't go away. Yeah. So the format of today, <coughs> the format of today is to give you an overview of how you work around injuries. We can't obviously be too specific because there's so many injuries out there. We're going to try and give you some of the main ones as much as we can, but after we've delivered the lesson, then we can go to the Q&A and you can ask questions about any particular problems you've got. We'll give advice where we can, although if there's any anything that we can't really assess you properly, what we're going to say is go and see a professional in your area that can actually assess you. So just leading up to this live, we did a little post with a couple of stats and basically we're saying that one in five people have uh, back issues and one in, ten, no, one in five have knee issues and one in five, oh fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it was one in ten have hip and knees and one in five people have back issues, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people out there that have got some sort of issue or niggle, we're going to discuss each one, we're going to give you workarounds, potential stretches that may or may not help and it's about taking this education and just thinking, mm, if you feel it's suitable for you and if you're cleared by a doctor to try it, then give it a crack. And if it works, happy days. If it doesn't, then try something else. So, um, if we start with the, the, the most common problems, which is probably the knees, right? Yeah. Um, the knees, see, like, even within our membership, you know, we, we are coaching our members through the ability to the training, <coughs> their nutrition, their mindset, everything else. And the most common issue that's always coming up is when they're doing a particular exercise they go oh I can't do this one because I've got sore knees or I've got bad knees or I've had knee replacements I've had it's always around the knees now when it comes to our membership we can absolutely guide them through alternatives so they can still get a good workout so what we'll cover today is um, how, how you go about that what are the common exercises that will affect the knees and what, can, what you do as alternatives um, so that you make sure that you get a good workout. Now, first and foremost, you want to ask the question, like, how long have you had that particular injury for? If it is very, very recent, you want to try and analyse what happened. Did you do too much work in the garden? Were you kneeling down for too long? Did you jump off a, a height and land funny or step off a, a step, an extra stair that wasn't there? Whatever it is, you want to try and establish, is this a long-term thing or a short-term thing? If it's a short-term thing, you want to try and establish what happened. And like with all things, you want to follow the, the, sort of the rice protocol, rest, ice compress, elevate, all that kind of stuff. Then you want to ask yourself, is it getting better? Now, normally speaking, if you've got a knee injury, if it doesn't feel like it's getting better, then our go-to is always to go and see someone in person who can evaluate what is wrong with the knee. Um, they can evaluate it, give you some rehabilitation exercises, and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, you're, you're on the way to um, better knee health. With that being said, sometimes you've had chronic knee illness that you've maybe ignored for a long time, or maybe it crept up slowly and there were certain movements that you could do, but certain movements that you couldn't, and then over time there was more couldn'ts than coulds. Um, if that's the case, then sometimes um, stretching routines can also help, which we'll go into in a moment, and then modification exercises. Now, one of the first things about knee issues, if you want to think about the VMO, I'm going to show you a bit of knee porn here, it's the vastus medialis obliques on the ligaments, then all right, it's the cradle of your knee, if you like. Okay. Yeah, you're going to do that, you're going to go, V-M-O. V-M-O. <laughs> <laughs> we bald knee. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we bald knee. Um, now, a lot of the time what happens is like, the invention of the toilet has affected our V-M-O. <laughs> because our bodies are designed to squat all the way down and up. Our prehistoric selves used to do that every day to poop. Ever since the, also to, to forage for food, to play with your kids, to, to look at anything on the ground, you just squat, even just to rest and eat food, you know, seats, you know, the toilet is obviously a, a huge culprit for this, but even just seats in general, normally you're eating food, you're down on the ground, you're kind of just, you're eating things, and, and the whole tribe are kind of like that, yeah, just eating food and doing your thing. So the invention of toilets and chairs 
we end up sitting at right angles. Everything's designed for a right angle, so at no point are you really overstressing or overstretching the VMO or all the ligaments and tending in that knee position. The problem you then have is these start to shorten. And when you then go to go do something like you kneel down in the kitchen to get under some cupboard, or maybe you're looking under the kitchen sink to look at a pipe, or you're out in the garden and you kneel down, you don't think you're doing much because you're like, oh, I'm just kneeling down, it's not a big issue. But if you kneel down, I'm not going to ask you to do this now, but if you imagine kneeling down just now, and I can't really demonstrate that much, you're actually stretching everything through the knee through its full range of motion. And you're, you're putting a lot of weight down through that too. Now, if you've got healthy knees and you're able to do that all the time, then you won't have any issues. But if you don't, if you've been not stretching that enough, then you're going to put a lot of strain through the VMO. And that's where you start to get micro tears, trauma. And then when you try and do everyday tasks, you're just like, ah, oh, my knee's bad. So it's improving the health of this area. It can be done through stretching and doing basic um, fundamental movements through their full motion. So... That's how chronic knee problems come up. It's just modern life gives us bad knees because we're not using your body as nature intended. Nature intended you to, to do a full squat. If you watch a kid, for example, um, any toddler, when they're playing with toys or sometimes even eating food, if you give them like a wee snack or something, they will squat, bum to floor, and it looks so natural. They're not in any stress whatsoever. <coughs> and if you ask most, most adults to do that, you just can't do it. You can't squat anywhere close, even parallel sometimes, with your hips always being above your knees. Now, what can then start to happen? Because we don't have that flexibility and mobility, what can happen is you then start to... So if this is your shins, okay, and, and your knees are here, normally speaking, when you're asked to grasp, squat, you're kind of like this position here, okay? Now, the, the knees are stretched, but in a very comfortable position. Now, what can happen is, through modern life, we then start to do this. And because then the knee comes out further than your ankle, it then puts as a shearing force of your body weight, your whole body weight, the shearing force going forward like this, because this is where your this is where your, your thighs are, and this is your shins, and then puts a shearing force through your knees as well, um, because they're coming too far forward, because you don't have the flexibility in your hip flexors, in your hamstrings. So this can happen rather than being staying above your ankles and actually your bum coming down. Yes, you've got the stretch, but you don't have the shearing force going through your knee because your your all your your shearing force is going into your hips, which is a big huge joint. Okay, big strong your your your, your glutes are the biggest muscle in your body. The joint the hip joint itself is very very strong. It's a big huge ball and socket joint rather than your knee. <coughs> There's a little bit more going on there, so you don't want that that shearing force. And ultimately, this is then what happens when you go into particular exercises when you're thinking about. Uh, lunges is normally a main culprit, also squats when done incorrectly. You're still putting, when you lunge, a lot of people will lunge forward and the knees come far, too far forward compared to where their ankles are and it puts a shearing force coming right through the knees. People say, oh I can't do it because my knees are sore. You can't do it because you're doing it wrong. Okay, and because you're doing it wrong for so long and because of modern life, you're then creating more problems and you're compounding the problems by doing more and more of this, okay? Squats is a different example because it's much easier to get a squat right and it's easier to coach someone through what a squat should look like and because then you're both legs at the same time, it's easier to then load up the glutes and the hips rather than on the knees. Now, some of the preventive things, so if you've already got bad knees, we're gonna get that into the other in a second. So some of the preventative things that you can do if you've got the beginnings of knee pain and it might be because of the VMO, or what Steve was describing, position when you're doing things, Stretch, stretching off the hamstrings and calves, your classic sit and reach test, which I'm performing badly here on this stool, really loosening off those hamstrings and calves is going to take pressure off the knee. Another thing we want to touch on, which because we're sitting on our asses right now, we are deactivating our glutes. And one of the biggest problems that comes with knee injuries is because you have dominant quads, dominant thigh muscles. And this comes about when, because we're sitting down on our bums all day, we deactivate the glutes. When we then get up to move around, our brain is more fired up to use the quad, and you end up with an out imbalance quad to hamstring to glute ratio when you start to perform simple movements. Then you'll get a shortening of the hamstrings, shortening of the glutes, which can then lead on to back pain, which we'll get to, all because your quads are trying to do the majority of the, the things 
that they should be collectively doing in a synergistic fashion, so lots of muscles working together. So stretching out the hamstrings, stretching out the calves, stretching the quads too, but hip also, yep, yeah, hip flexors, but also firing up the glutes. There's a really simple exercise, and to be honest, everybody should be able to do this exercise. Stand up, assuming you can, and you just literally squeeze your glutes together as hard as you can for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds if you can. Squeeze for 10, 20, 30, whichever you can manage. Release. Squeeze again. Release. And what that's going to do is start firing up those glutes, getting them working again, getting them utilized in everyday life. If you can make that a daily habit, let's just say every time you went to make yourself a cup of tea, you're standing there while the kettle's boiling, squeezing those glutes. Or even if you're getting it from a cafeteria and somebody's making your coffee while they're making it you're squeezing the glutes you're firing them up you're going to activate them and you're going to balance out your quads which is going to minimize any further injury if you're looking for ways of <coughs> of um firing up your glutes and you if you're not quite there yet with that mind muscle connection people say i'm not too sure how to fire up my glutes what you can do imagine that this is this is my legs one of the biggest problems that people have is knock knees. The knees drop in. The, the knees drop in because the glutes are not firing up. And you get what's called, um, well, everyone's got a Q angle, it's called. So the hips are here, it comes down into the knees and then down into the feet. So this here, um, this angle here is called the Q angle. Now females have got a bigger Q angle than males, okay? Because generally speaking, you've got wider hips because you're, you need to be able to birth children. Um, so this is what happens, you have this Q angle, but because of the modern life, you've already got this Q angle, so your knees are already coming in slightly, but then inactive glutes will just then completely give you knock knees, which means you're running, you're squatting, any exercise that you're doing, you're, like Rab said, your thighs are firing up more than your, what your glutes are. So if you're looking to fire up your glutes, what you should try and do is actually rotate your knees outwards, okay? So normally, knees are dropping inwards, Try to rotate, and it's not about pushing the knees out right, it's about rotating around. So if you just stand, and then just try to rotate, but if you're stood up, if I just rotate now, my feet do this, right, because I'm sat on a seat. Whereas if I, my feet are on the ground, now I try and rotate, suddenly it's my glutes that do that rotation. The glutes fire up, so if you try to rotate your knees to the outside as you're standing up, then you're able to feel more of your glutes, and you're actually instantly improving your knee strength, or your knee um, mobility and stability, just by doing that one exercise. Moving slightly further up the body, you're gonna get lower back, okay? So lower back is a really, really common issue, especially in guys, ladies too. And more often than not, it comes from deactivated glutes or tight glutes, more often than that. There are certain stretches that you can do, if able, which will help to ease off the problem. So stretching off the hip flexors, first and foremost. The reason for that is your hip flexors here, if they're tight, they're going to pull your pelvis forward. When they pull the pelvis forward, they're then going to arch the back. So by stretching these off, you're going to then loosen off the lower back to a certain extent, and you're going to get a bit more range of movement. Stretching the glutes, that can be done if you're just lying on your bed, pull a knee to the chest. I'm absolutely not going to pull a knee up to the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling a knee to your chest, stretching, pulling the body across the body. If you're familiar with some yoga poses or pigeon pose, get down, that gets the hip glute as well in there. Fantastic for loosening that off. When it comes to all, any and all stretching, especially if you've got an ailment, you have to make a habit of it. Doing it once or twice is not going to solve the problem. You need to make it into habit. If it's already tight and sore, then you need to be stretching out three to four times a day for at least two weeks until that's stretched off, and then you minimize it to once to twice a day to maintain it. But you have to look at your overall lifestyle. <coughs> you have to look at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. We've talked already about sitting down. We all sit down too much. It deactivates your glute, but then if you look at the, the position of my body right now, I'm sitting in this position, my hip flexors are already shortened just by sitting down. So your body will always adapt to your environment, always. So by this position here, my glutes are, we've got pressure on them and um, they're being stretched. Therefore, it's the best way to deactivate a muscle is by stretching it and putting pressure on it. We deactivate it, so the glutes are then deactivated. Hip flexors are then shortened. So if they stay long, it's then uncomfortable for them to be in this position. Therefore, your body naturally just shortens them up. Okay, it's a way of saving energy because we're always in this position. Sitting down for too long makes you very efficient at sitting down. Yeah. So as soon as you stand up, if you look at this position here, the hip flexors come through and actually go into the back of the hips, 
So if I then stand up and I'm pushing this down, if I've got a little short bit that goes to the back of my hips, if I then stand up, my legs going down, of course the back of my hips is then going to follow that. So that's why we then create this position here. Okay, you've got the arch in your back. So hip flexors, we can't emphasize enough. They need to be stretched out. But if you're sitting down for eight hours a day, do you really think that stretching once a day for, for two minutes is really going to make much of a difference? It will help slightly in that moment. If you go straight back into just sitting down for eight hours and not getting up in between and stretching out, moving around, get some blood flow into those areas, then you're, you're, you're wasting your time doing that all stretch. You're just, your body's just going to respond back to that environment. Um, above and beyond the hip flexors, obviously just stretching out the back itself, but strengthening up your core. Again, using this as an example, if I do this, look what's also then stretched in this position. Yeah? So then suddenly, if you then tighten up the core, stretch out your lower back, stretch out the hip flexors, you go from that position there, suddenly to there, okay? So it's like, it's like your shagging muscle, eh? Look at this time you're serious and you lower the tone. <laughs> you've got to shrink that here. All the guys out there, you've got to shrink that. I don't need on the position. Depend on your position. Strengthen up your shagging muscles. <laughs> so you want to strengthen up the core, okay? It's not about doing crunch, 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 crunch. If you crunch, you're then going to bring your body down like this, yeah? You're going to give yourself bad posture. It's all about pulling it in, okay? So it's lower body. So if you're doing like leg lifts, flutter kicks, anything using the lower abs, it's going to help with this position. It's going to help stretch out your lower back. Um, this will then start to ease up any issues you have with your lower back, as long as it's not an injury per se. Now, one of the common questions we get when someone joins our membership is to say, I have bad knees, hip, back, elbow, shoulder, whatever it is. There's exercises I can't do. Can I do the program? First and foremost, what we say is you focus on what you can do as opposed to what you can. And then you break it down quite logically. You, you take the exercise, you say, right, what is that exercise trying to establish? If it's a, a squat, the squat will utilize the quads, hamstrings and glutes, a little bit of core, a um, bit more cardiovascular if you're doing lots of reps of them. But fundamentally, we're trying to work the legs. If someone then says, right, well, I've got bad knees and I can't do squats, you can start to break down, okay, what position exactly is it sore in? Is it full body weight squats? Would a ball against the wall help you? Yes or no? And you can then start utilizing other exercises. If you can't then <coughs> put all your weight through your knees, you can do seated exercises like leg extensions with bands. And I'm being very risque here. Yeah. Leg extensions with bands. Um, you can do flexion techniques where you tense the muscle and release. Uh, you can lie down onto the floor. You can get the hamstrings and glutes going by bridging up. The point is there's actually a lot of exercises out there that you can utilize to get the muscles working. Even something as simple as lying on a bed and putting a cushion between your thighs and squeezing the thighs together, getting the adductors working, getting the thighs fired up. There are things you can do. Granted, you might not be able to do everything, but you focus on what you can do as opposed to what you can't. So um, <coughs> the next most common um, injuries is actually on the shoulders. There's a few things we can do with the shoulders, but because it's quite complex, um, the, the best thing we can do is actually a bit of stretching, but that really comes down to your individual problems, because you might stretch it this way, and actually this might already be too, too um, flexible, and actually you're going to exaggerate the problem. Um, you might stretch this way. In my experience, stretching this way and actually down behind your back, doing this is the most common way of, of fixing problems, but because it's so complex, it's really difficult to give you generalised advice around the, the, the shoulder. Can we go to comments? Let's go to the comments. So the idea is we've not checked the comments yet, so please don't be annoyed if we've missed your questions so far. We're going to scroll up and work our way down. And we're looking specifically for any questions that are injury or ailment or adaptation yeah. or modification required. And we'll try and give you specific advice if and when we can as much as possible but please understand that some problems we're just going to say look you need to get this assessed properly. Uh, Tony sent us 200 stars, awesome. I'm just going to get the YouTube comments out. A bunch of people saying hello, if you've said hello, hello back, thank you for the comments, we're not going to go through them all. Uh, we're going to go to the, the questions as quickly as possible. But hello to everybody on YouTube yeah. and on Facebook. Now, Carlotta is on YouTube and she's asked a really good question. To squeeze the glutes, does one have to stand? 
No, you can actually lie face down on the floor, on a bed. You can do it face up as well, but if you're face down, uh, there's no pressure going through the glutes, so you're not going to then be deactivating them. So you know, you, to answer your question, you don't have to stand, but it's ideal if you are, um, what's the word I'm looking for, in one streamline from shoulder, hip, knee, down, rather than bend and deactivate. All right, so, boom. And Caroline Creamer says, for <coughs> someone who is really sedentary way too much, where is the, be 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 the great place to start besides walking? Caroline, to be honest with you, what we're going to say here is our membership. It's, it's designed for uh, any fitness level, but we do, most of our members are beginners. Um, and it takes you through the, the ins and outs of good nutrition, ins and outs of a healthy lifestyle, and a progressive training program that suits your fitness level. You meet up where you are, and you build your way up. Uh, so just go to thekillingcoaches.com, have a read about it, and see how it suits you. Build up slowly, progression over perfection. Uh, Rock Shots On says, hello gents, I just took a spill on the concrete yesterday, Oof. sounds bad, crawled out of bed today, no exercise though, right? Again, with all those sort of things, you want to listen to your body. More often than not, if you're questioning whether you should exercise or not, it usually means you probably shouldn't exercise. Um, <clears throat> you'll know yourself, you're like, oh, I just feel a bit achy, sore. A good rule of thumb is, um, you know, if you're really achy and sore, then definitely rest, but focus on stretching, focus on your nutrition, have some hot baths. If it's slowly getting better, then great, just wait out until it gets to a manageable level that you maybe feel motivated to do the muscles that aren't sore. If it's not getting better, then absolutely go and see someone, because mm -hmm. if it's not getting better, then it's not going to get better. So mm -hmm. definitely go and see someone. Uh, Lisa says, hmm... Four perforated discs in my lower back, knees bone to bone, pelvic legs to twist, um, tight hip flexors. How do I how do I work around that? Lisa, um, perforated discs. I'm going to say you need to see a specialist because we're not back specialists when you've got issues like that. Um, however, your knees bone to bone. Again, nothing much we can do about that either. But what you can start to do is strengthen up the muscles and your movement around that. So I'm guessing that you're still able to sort of walk around as, as best you can. But then going to like pelvic legs to twist. Okay, well great. Why is that? What muscles are tight? Which ones need stretched out? Which ones need to be activated more of? Um, and, and being more conscious of that will really help with that twisting movement. And then your tight hip flexors. Great. Let's get them stretched out. Stretch out. Massage them out. You can use a foam roller to get my myofascial release. Anything you can do that's going to help stretch your hip flexors is then going to help your lower back as well. Help those perforated discs. Um. Maggie says, Glasgow granny with a kettle on any time you're passing lads. <laughs> well, you better be squeezing those glutes when you're doing that, Maggie. As we said, you activate those glutes when oh, you're putting the kettle well, maybe on. Maybe I'll squeeze your glutes. <laughs> <laughs> Floss is saying, ooh, I like that position. Oh. And Sarah says, so do I. Susan, how about something for the thoracic spine? Mine is achy all the time. I have been for years and I thought it was um, just muscle pain. Have an MRI Saturday to see what's really going on. So your thoracic spine um, is often just through from bad posture. We've, again, everything we've talked about more in life sitting down too much, but it's also because we're always here. Okay, we're always like we're washing dishes, we're typing on computers, we're driving cars, and um, anything sort of brings you into this position. Even sometimes when you're lounging and you're watching TV, you're like this. Anything that's going around here. So then when you do then try to sit up or stand or walk your thoracic spine can become very, very painful because it's used to being in that sort of slightly stretched position and then you're doing this. So the muscles have to work overtime just to maintain good posture. So I would say do more um, stretches. If you're into yoga, do more yoga. Things like um, down dog, cat camel, anything that's going to bring you into extension and help stretch out these muscles here and just start to shorten your thoracic spine. So what we're saying at the moment, we're talking about your lower back, your lower back is already shortened, but because your lower back is shortened, if your thoracic spine didn't do anything different, you'd be looking at the roof the whole time. Right? Because this is kind of so what your body does, you'll always keep at the horizon with your eyes. That's the way your body works. Your, your eyes always want to be facing forward to maintain your horizon so you can look after yourself. So if your 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 lower back is like this, your thoracic spine has to do this, but then if nothing else changes, then you're kind of looking at the ground as well. So then your cervical spine does this. Okay, so then you've got this tight muscles in your neck, stretched muscles in your thoracic, tight muscles in your lumbar, and then your whole body is then creating this too much of a curve. 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 
So it's all to do with shagging muscles, get the shoulders back, lift the head, tuck your chin in slightly. Don't be scared to give yourself a double chin in this one. We're going to stretch out those neck muscles and activate the upper back. That's how we create good posture. But maintaining good posture is one way of actually maintaining good posture. People always say, what's the best exercise for posture? Like, posture. <laughs> Just maintain good posture and those muscles will start to shorten or lengthen over time based on your position. Another thing you can do is the door lean as well, stretch off the chest and shoulders. So put either side of the door and lean through the doorway, really stretch that off. Um, and make use of a broom handle as well, take it behind, get a bit of rotation through the spine as well. I know that I suffer because I've got terrible posture and uh, years of either doing too much chest or just playing a lot of rugby. I'm just kind of this and I'm always going, oh, and where I get it, right in the middle, upper part of the back. And I end up having to do quite a lot of twisting movements with broom handles to loosen off that spine, definitely benefits. So if you've got a broom handle, just arms wide, just nice, take your time with it, gentle, get a bit of rotation and door handle stretches can help that too. <coughs> Linda Logan says, once again, a very interesting chat. Thank you both for your time. I fell off a box at the gym and hurt my right shoulder. It hurts a bit, more uncomfortable than sore. How do I stretch it out? Um, it sounds like a bit of an impact style thing, Linda. So you're probably best going to see someone in person. Um, not knowing how hard you fell would determine how serious it is and what mm -hmm. angle you landed as well. Um, generally speaking, go and see like a, a local physio or sports therapist and tell them, you'll be able to demonstrate to them exactly how you fell and they'll probably be able to get to the root of the problem well, a lot quicker than we can just by reading mm -hmm. their comment. But I would definitely say with something like that, it sounds like a very much an impact based thing. Um, it could be a number of things based on that. So go and try your very best to see someone in person. Um, Billy's asking, I probably won't be able to hear the, hear the reply. Let me start that again. Billy says, I probably won't be able to hear the reply, but um, ankles and knees usually ache more after sleeping. Trying to get out of bed to walk is sometimes very painful. I don't know why there is more pain after resting. Um, it sounds to me like um, it's when your muscles are cold or your joints are cold. So after sleeping, obviously the blood is then sort of used for repairing and, and, and processing of all the different areas of your body. Um, and you're probably finding that it's just sore when there's less blood flow to those areas. So if I were you, Billy, I would try to start to mobilize your joints before you get out of bed, just trying to create more blood flow into those areas. With the blood flow, you're going to also create synovial fluid in, in the joints themselves, which will really help um, to make them feel better, feel warmer and more mobile. So just lying in bed and actually just rotating your ankles, you can flex backwards and forwards, pulling your toes towards you, all of the type of things. You can even do it with your knees as well. I'm not going to demonstrate, but like bringing your knees up to your chest, just starting rolling from side to side as well. So if anyone's got like a lower back, it's a great idea to bring both knees to the chest when you're lying in bed and just rock them from side to side. It doesn't even have to be very far. Just rock from, from side to side and it just starts to create a little bit of movement in your joints brings in some synovial fluid, but you, your joints produce that naturally with movement. So you can start to then mobilize yourself before you even get out of bed. If you're suffering a little bit, and you just jump straight out of bed, then you've got like cold joints, they're clearly suffering a little bit, and you're gonna have that impact. I don't know what your body weight is, Billy, um, but if you carry a few extra pounds, you've got more weight hitting down on your joints, uh, knees, ankles, hips, um, it's the best way to do it, is just mobilize first. I've been chatting to Billy actually on Facebook, so thinking about joining us. Oh, nice one. Well, if you join Billy, we'll be speaking with you soon. Uh, Germanis, how can I reduce lower back pain when doing overhead presses? I try tightening my abs, but it doesn't seem to help. Should I pull my shoulder back? So what you're describing there is you get a tight lower back when you're pushing up above you. Now, <coughs> generally speaking, if you've got a tight lower back anyway, you're arching your back and you're trying to kind of get your chest up, you're trying to bring more of the chest muscle into the movement. Try doing them seated, make sure you've got a good lumbar posture. You've already said about engaging the core, but try going a bit lighter on the weight too. Make sure you, your back is completely in there, engaged, okay? There's no gap between the chairs, so sit down, go a bit lighter. Another thing you can do is if you've got a bench in front of you, put your feet up onto the bench while sat on the chair, because the minute you bring your knees up, you're going to compress in, and then slightly lighter weight and maybe go slightly higher reps and just burn the shoulders out that way. You can also look at your posture and your mobility because if you don't have this shoulder flexibility to really bring your, your arms back, so I go to the side here, 
if I if I was going to like rotating backwards, and if I couldn't get to that position, I'm going to go right to the side. If I can't get this position to then push upwards, say for instance you do this and you can only get to there, suddenly to push upwards, your lower back has to work quite a long way to be able to then push up. Yeah? So you need to then work on your, this external rotation to make sure that you can get those, that arm all the way back. So you can actually just push upwards and you can actually maintain a strong core. But like Rab said, you can then become stronger if you lean back ever so slightly and actually able to get the shoulders back rather than everything coming from the lower back, you actually get the shoulders back and then you can then use the chest muscles to push up a little bit more. But just make sure your mobility is there that you can actually perform that movement. Yeah. Um, because if, if not, you're, you're going to compensate using your lower back and it becomes a, a, a what would you call like a, a moot exercise. It's, it's more pointless than it is point full. I know that personally when I'm doing shoulder press, I don't have any bother until I start going beyond the weight that I probably should be doing for good yeah. form. And if I'm not completely stretched off properly, I find myself doing it, I lean back a bit more to get that extra rep in. So sometimes just be mindful of the weight that you're lifting as well yeah. Yeah. for form. Um, I've such, uh, sorry, Jackie says, I've such painful hips on the outside, it's making my life miserable. Suggestions, please. So you've got hips, sore hips, <coughs> sore hips on the outside. Um, there's obviously you've got your IT band coming down there. Um, the IT band can become very, very tight. Normally it would affect the knee, but it might be affecting your hips. There's a bunch of reasons that um, you might be feeling your, your hips. Sometimes it's weak glutes as well. Keep going back to weak glutes. I and mean, this should just be called weak glutes in one out of five. <laughs> because when you've got weak glutes, like I said, when your knees drop in, if you think about the ball and socket here, if this was your knee and if it was dropping in, the ball and socket actually is then sort of protruding out slightly. Um, because, because the glutes aren't strong enough to maintain, basically your glutes would be around here, catching onto the, the outside of your, your thigh bone, and then by, if that's, if that's weaked, weaked, weak, weakened, <laughs> if, if the, the glutes are weakened, then your, your, your ball and socket joint is just not going to be as stable. So you need to strengthen up all your glutes by pulling that in, you're pushing the knee outward, or rotating it outward slightly, and then you're solidifying that ball and socket joint a little bit more. That's probably going to be your best step. Another thing you can do, we did a video a while ago on foam rolling, um, it was how to use a foam roller and there's a really good one for the IT band if you get yourself a foam roller to do that. As Stephen mentioned the glutes, so what we said earlier on in the stream, every time you go to boil the kettle, squeeze the glutes, work it out and you could potentially look into what we mentioned earlier with the pigeon stretch as well if you can do that so hip and glute and just lying on the bed pull the knee to the chest and pull the leg across the body so hip and glute stretches might help yeah. um, but wiggler says how can <laughs> we've got a genuine question <laughs> uh, how can i reduce neck pain when lifting weight example shoulder shrugs and back bends irritate it i have a suspicion i have it has to do with posture yeah, that sounds like it. You think um, back bends and shrugs, so shrugs is when you're, you know, pulling up to the usual with a barbell, but bum, dumbbells will do the same. The shrugs will want to pull you forwards, and obviously you're trying to pull yourself up and you're getting neck pain. That's because you'll be your neck pulling yourself back up. Back bends, if you're doing, I'm guessing you're reading like good mornings, I guess. <clears throat> same thing, you know, the weight's pulling you down, you're going to have to use the neck to pull up. So it sounds like you might have a lot of tension through here. I wouldn't be shocked to hear that you maybe suffer tension headaches no. as well. Um, so stretching off the chest, the shoulders. Um, so, so, sometimes if, if you've got a really tight shoulder and it's really giving you a bad neck, I would question the exercises you're doing. The back bend, not so much. I think they could be maybe a, po a posture technique type of thing. Definitely the shrugs. The, 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 the shrugs. I mean, even if you're doing it with dumbbells with your arms by your side, so it's, you're, not, you're not forcing the neck, even just that, that lifting them up, you're then creating even more tension in this already tight muscle. You're putting more stress onto a stressed muscle and it becomes a MOOC exercise. It's just like, it's doing more harm than good. I would just leave it. If you want to strengthen up that muscle or, or create a bit of um, stimulus in that muscle without tightening it, then actually just holding a pair of dumbbells or kettlebells, whatever, by your side, maintain good posture and allowing the weight of the dumbbells to pull your shoulders down. See that, I'm, I'm forcing my shoulders down right now, if I release, see they just pop up slightly. That means that my posture, my, my shoulders are not exactly where they should be. But a lot of people can like, they'll be here, they can push your shoulders down, they'll go like this, they go, oh, 
ah, and they'll be like, yeah, but it feels really, really tight. And then when they release, it comes way back up here. So there's a, a physical difference. <coughs> I'm, I'm, that's me normal, that's me pushing down. Normal, pushing down. So even just holding weights, allow the weights to pull your arms down, can really help to stretch out all these muscles and actually give you a much better um, sort of body position, a much better um, sort of shoulder length. And remember, when you are holding the weights in a shrug position, you're still engaging the traps. Yeah. You know, how often have we done things like farmer's wall, yeah, yeah. and afterwards our neck, our traps are all pumped up, and we weren't shrugging them at Just the time. turning the weight, just sort of tensing slightly, um, creates a, a stimulus for the muscles without shortening them. The other thing you could look into as well is you get neck stretch, neck size, where you just pull the head to one side, mm -hmm. pull the head, just hold. Pull up to the front's a really good one as well. Again, with all stretches, you want to implement them as a habit. Doing it once or twice won't yeah. solve it. So whatever you do decide to do, do decide to do, 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 do. Um, try and make a habit of it for at least two weeks before you would give up and see if it's try something else. Usually within two weeks of stretching three, four, five times a day, you'll notice a huge difference. Um, Tessa said, this just put all my physiotherapist advice into an explanation that clicked. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome, Tessa. Oh, happy days. And Leslie saying, I took your advice to see a podiatrist. An assessment and treatment has really helped. No more backache and knee feeling better. Thanks, guys. Leslie. Boom, Leslie. Awesome. Leslie's one of our returning members, so yeah. it's been great having you back, Leslie. Absolutely. Um, can breathing help with increasing reps? Nick, absolutely. Um, your body needs oxygen to perform. You, not necessarily in the moment, you can obviously operate without breathing, but at some point you, you get into a bit of oxygen debt. So if you can then master your breathing while you're exercising, you can absolutely last longer. Your muscles will go to do more repetitions, depending on how heavy the weights are. If you're going, if you're going for absolute strength, then it's really a case of just getting through it. Um, there's a certain breathing pattern you can do, but I'm going to guess that's not what you mean. This really is about um, doing more repetitions, which means if you're breathing more, taking more oxygen right from the start, your body's got more to work with. So yes. Uh, Linda says, have to shoot off, but thank you again for chatting to us all. Have a great evening. Have a great evening, Linda. Yeah. Um, Jackie says, sitting with my knees together is uncomfortable. Put one knee over the other. Sitting ladylike is impossible. Um, so just sit with your knees together. Oh, is this, uh, oh, so Jackie, is this is the outside of your hips? So yeah. Okay, so it sounds to me like uh, yeah, you've got a bunch of issues going on. If you can't even sit here, then you've got serious mobility issues going on in your hips. So I'm guessing you would have to be unladylike, uh, which is maybe a bit more natural, actually. Um, it's, it's pretty much not normal to be able to sit like this constantly, but we, we need to do it. Obviously, we're, we're in kilts right now, so we need to do it as well sometimes. Um, but it sounds to me like your hips are really, really tight. So things like uh, Rab mentioned the pigeon pose, which is when you bring one leg over, um, and sometimes even just trying to bring one leg over, like as the tail rotating around, can be enough without even sort of really sinking into that. Um, but Jackie, it does sound like your issue is quite severe, so I would recommend going to see a physio about this, uh, or a massage therapist will be able to assess you as well. Uh, Kawata says, when biomechanical engineers look at the body from their specialised viewpoint, they are amazed at how many principles of engineering are violated. Great <laughs> lesson, thank you, yeah. Yeah, um, so true. I'm going to just jump to Wayne here, sorry. Okay. I want to do squats, but I get pain in my left knee um, due to injuring my knee a couple of years ago. What can I do to lessen the pain? So what we talked about earlier on in the stream, if it's a long-term kind of injury, you want to start off trying to stretch off the hamstring and calf in that side of the leg first and see if that makes a benefit or takes away the pain. Looking at different forms of squats too, like is it when you try and go all the way to the floor or is it when you're even just doing a half squat, try and work out, you can do squats with a ball against the wall, mm -hmm. see if that helps because when you put the ball against the wall, you can incorporate a little bit more quad, lean back into it and it can take pressure off yeah. the knee. Sometimes just looking at your technique, a lot of people get the squat technique wrong, like I mentioned at the start, sometimes the knee just comes too far forward. And because the glutes are not strong enough to do the squat, so if I just stand up on this, <coughs> for instance, you're squatting, a lot of people will do this and the knees come instantly forward because the glutes are not strong enough to do it, so they're trying to be too thigh dominant. If you then fire up the glutes and actually stick your bum out as far as you can, 
See, instantly my knees are still above my ankles. If you're pushing your bum out as you're squatting as far as you can. So that's why things like... It's thrusting in my face. I'm just like sitting here like... <laughs> actually, all right. I was actually pushing my bum to Tilly Pops. Ah. Um, <laughs> 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 that funny on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, sofa squats can be really, very good. So stand in front of your sofa and just push your bum backwards as far as you can. Um, until you until you sit on the sofa, just see how your knees feel with that. Mm -hmm. And again, by pushing your bum back as far as you can, you might feel like you're about to fall over, and that's okay because you're, you're you're just in front of your sofa. So you just sit down. You go right. That was a bit too far. Let's try again. You stand up. Use arm rest. Come back up again and try again. And just get that sort of technique spot on with your knees pushed out, externally rotated knees, bum out as far as you can. I used to coach people with them um, with bad squat technique, just using the, the triangle um, imagery. So when I was doing more PT, I would say, think about a triangle between your hips, the middle of your hips or your tailbone and your two knees. And you want to spread that triangle as much as you possibly can. So it's knees out wide, bum out as far as you can. So the bum's going backwards, knees are going wide and you're creating a big triangle. And that normally fixes most problems. If you have access to a suspension trainer, which is like your TRX things, TBTs, you, know, you can wrap them over doors, trees. We've done a video on it, so suspension training, lots of videos online. But if you do a suspension trainer squat, it utilizes another way of doing the sofa squat that Steve has described. Because you've got the handles, you can really stick the bum out, go for the triangle shape that Steve's describing. And because you've got the handles, worst case, if you lose your balance, you've got stabilizers yeah. to help you back up. And you're also taking some of your body weight off your legs, which yeah. actually can really help too. Now, when it comes down to we are not endorsed by TRX, we'd actually say don't buy a TRX because it's so bloody expensive. Yeah. Look online for the term suspension trainer and you'll pick one up for a tenth of the price. Yeah. And they're very fabric convinced. So there's lots of different brands of them, so we don't yeah. care which one you get. TRX seem to have the brand, but actually there's a bunch of other ones that are just as good, you know, literally exactly the same thing. And, and they literally are a tenth of the price. <coughs> Worst case, you could get a bit of rope, wrap it around a tree branch, Hold on to both handles and then when you're squatting down, you can stick the bum out and take as much pressure off the knees as you feel you need to. The hands are there to help you. <coughs> Flossie, I have quite an arch on my back. We'll get squeezing and um, get squeezing, Flossie. And as I will catch the other half of this video tomorrow, no worries. Uh, Rosalind, hi coach, I'm not allowed to twist or bend following surgery. Can you suggest a replacement for Russian twists? or the TikTok exercises. So Rosalind, you're actually one of our members, um, so you can you, we get a more personalized response within the membership, um, but we can actually answer you here. If you can't, if not allowed to twist and bend, then yeah, don't do Russian twists or the TikTok exercise. Um, it's a case of then you work, what can you do to work those same muscles, things like side plank, which is then just a static exercise, so you know there's no twisting involved at all. You can then do side plank, normal plank, and you'll be absolutely fine. Just going to just give out a shout out to Susan who gave us a wee donation on YouTube. Run Susan. Susan. Uh, do, 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 do. Kim Graneman says, hey boys, Kim from yeah. South Dakota, finally got the internet sorted, great to be back in the clan. Happy days, Happy days. Kim, one of our loyal members, yeah. good to have you on there. Um, and Diane says, had emergency surgery a couple of months ago uh, with an ulcerated appendix. I had to cut through my abdominal muscles, which are some good exercises to strengthen the lower abdominal muscles. Thanks. So, uh, Diane, uh, we so again. I'll go and search for the video while you're explaining. Yeah, cool. So, Diane, you're actually one of our members as well. Um, so, right, we'll what we need to do is it's the same as having a C-section, basically what you're referring to. If I had a C-section, then the muscles are basically cut through. So, what you have to do is start rewiring them. Okay. So, obviously, you've got to. The, the, the mind, the brain has to know, has to be able to fire a signal to those muscles to fire up. Now, that when, I, when we do this with, with our muscles, you know, you think you're squeezing your bicep, but also your brain sending this electrical signal to then create this movement. If the muscle's been cut through, that signal can't get through, but you, the, the surgeon has actually attached the muscles again. You just have to train them in order to, to fire up. So it takes time, it takes persistence, but so does all the exercise, right? So what you start to do is think about the muscle called the transverse abdominis and the, and the abs. So a lot of people think abs is just, or core is your abs, so you do more crunches, and it's not about that. It's about pulling that in a little bit more and actually just trying this movement here. Okay, you can see my, my tummy moving. I'm not squeezing my abs here, I'm pulling my stomach in. Imagine that you're on the beach and you're wearing a bikini, especially you're wearing a bikini, and um, 
some 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 sexy person walks past and you're like, oh, and they look at you, you instantly go, whoop, and you pull your stomach in because you kind of want to look your best. That movement there, when you pull your stomach in, is working something called the transverse abdominis, which is one of the one of the most important muscles for your all of your core. So just pulling it in and just try and get used to feeling that muscle. So if it, if it was your bicep, you'd be you would just try and move your arm, you try and connect your mind and, and be aware of the muscle. Just bring your awareness to it. So it's the same here, bring your awareness. And just stand in front of a mirror. When you get out of the shower, stand naked in front of a mirror and just try to, you don't have to be naked, you can put some trousers on, but as long as you can see that area. If you put your socks on, <laughs> keep your toes warm. Um, but just stand so you can see that in the mirror and just try to move it, try and move it, try and kind of tense it up. And Rab's going to have a video for you as I've well. just literally sent that link to you, um, Dan. I've put that cool. on your reply if you refresh it's the up here. That's, um, that's the video that we made, um, how to fix your lower back pain. There's a couple of different techniques. Have a watch of that video and that will definitely help. I'm just going to give a shout out to Rock Shop because he said something very nice. He said, you guys were the best on getting me from no exercise to getting started. Love you both for that. Get yeah, your rock shot, get your rock shot running. <laughs> Um, Sarah, when I bring my leg backwards, I can't bring my leg up too high as my muscles are very tight, almost like they are going to cramp up. In, uh, any tips, please? So, Sarah, when you bring your leg backwards, you can't take it too high behind you? Oh, you mean like kicking out behind you? You mean like if this was your leg, kind of doing yeah. that? Like a pendulum behind? Again, again, Sarah, you're one of our members, so. You maybe explain that a little bit more in the, the clan community and then we can help you a little bit more in depth because there's a few questions around that in terms of your position. But because you're a member, you don't have to rely on these kind of live at fives. You've got a membership. So please, um, yeah, maybe explain that a little bit more in the forum and we can give you some help. Sounds like a hip flexor issue there. If it, if it is the pendulum going back, stretching off the hip flexors may help that. Uh, <coughs> Buffy, great idea about holding the kettlebells and stretching the shoulders. Going to try that. Happy days. Mm -hmm. Jackie says, thank you so much. Um, um, Jan, I'm going to give you a wee shout out. It says, hello from Alaska. What are your opinions on intermittent fasting? We're not going to cover that on this live feed because we're more talking around injuries. But it is a great question. We've covered this quite a lot, but we don't mind talking about it again. But we'll do another live at five. You a specific one. Yeah, we'll, we'll maybe do one on fasting. Um, Susan says, hi boys. Um, Billy says, what causes Charlie horses? And what can be done to stop the pain? Um, Billy, I'm not too sure what you mean by Charlie horses. Is that maybe a riding term or something? Yeah, I'm not too sure. At times that I get um, them in both legs at once. I'm not too sure what you mean by that, Billy. I'm going to assume it's something to do with the hips. You know, if you were Charlie horses, maybe if you're like riding a horse, then your legs ought to be quite wide. I'm not sure. Um, Susan said, miss the live, but we'll watch later. Um, Karen says, such helpful information, thank you so much. And Rockshot said, just a question, aren't you both supposed to be wearing a heavy leather pouch between your legs to prevent a wardrobe malfunction? You mean, referring to the Sporn, um, our new kilts, we wanted the design so that we didn't necessarily need to wear a Sporn. We can put a Sporn on this if we wanted to, uh, but this has got pockets hidden under here. Yeah, and we've got our, um, our sash. No what do we call it again? Call it just a sash. Sash. <laughs> sash. Um yeah, it's just a, it's, it adds a bit of texture so we don't need the, the spawn. We didn't like wear the spawn, it was just too cumbersome. And actually what you say is like it prevents wardrobe malfunction. Not in our experience. <laughs> <laughs> Not in our experience. But um, it just gets in the way. So as long as you're kinda of conscious of keeping the wee flat down in the middle, then we're much more comfortable not wearing a spawn. Carlotta says a Charlie horse is an intense, painful muscle spasm. Pardon. And a particular, a particular muscle. So did she get them? Is, did Billy get them? Is it he or she? I can't remember. Uh, Billy, Billy he. It's Billy, Billy he. he. Oh, I think so. Is it, is it Billy you're speaking to? I'm pretty sure it's a he. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, what causes? It? So again, so on, on sharp muscle, spasm that can sometimes be an electrolyte yeah. imbalance if you get muscle spasms. So you want to look into hydration, your electrolytes, mm. sodium, potassium, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. is it, it, can al it can also be shortened muscles. So if you like. Like say, if I had a shortened, I always refer to biceps, it's an easy one to explain. Um, if I had a shortened bicep like this, and then I was in, in squeezing my bicep, it, there's a potential for that to go into cramp as well. So actually just sort of stretching uh, whatever muscle it is out would be helpful. Help yeah, Carlotta's saying such as in the calf, the gastrocnemius. So I think it sounds like a 
cramp slash spasm. So yeah, I'd imagine it'd be electrolyte yeah. imbalance. So your hydration is your first go to to that, and then on the back of that, because normally if you if you're dehydrated, you're more likely to spasm if you're lacking flexibility. Mm-hmm. But then you want to look into electrolytes. Um, where we live in the UK, and it might not be everywhere else in the world, but <clears throat> our current sort of hydration and whatnot in our water system, generally if someone cramps, they're usually lacking potassium in our country, so banana fixes it. Other countries are different because warmer climates, you've maybe been sweating more, and you've got rid of other salts and whatnot, but look into your electrolytes regardless if you're getting spasms regularly. Um, <coughs> and yeah, a bunch of people just uh, uh, let us know what Charlie Horse is. It's just a cramp, so there's so many different um, reasons for it. So, um, And Don is asking, is your kilt pocket good for holding popcorn? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> that would be a new popcorn trick, wouldn't it? Which is funny, um, when, when, my, when my son was younger, we used to, like, we love watching movies at our house. We watch a movie and we always have popcorn, but because he didn't quite have his... his you know, all his pronunciation of words quite correct. He used to call it cock porn. No. porn. At some point, you're Isn't gonna that just porn. <laughs> <laughs> well, mind you, you get fanny porn. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him what's up with that. Oh, that's funny. Ah, Rosie's on. Or Rosie <coughs> from, uh, <coughs> Rosie, I think. Rosie's next next week's episode. Next, week's, next episode. week's episode on Jason, I believe. That's right, I guess. I'm looking forward to Rosie, because I haven't met you yet, Rosie, so I'm looking forward to seeing your episode. Well, we, we talked potentially about <coughs> um, going for book signing down in Dumfries. That's right. And uh, so we talked to Rosie. Because Rosie won't be far from Dumfries. Right? No, no, no. And we're going to have a proper... Rather than go for a book signing, we'll go for a book signing and a night out. Uh, and whiskey. And uh, whiskey. I'm sure um, Lee and Andre will be up for that as well. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, uh, Rosie is asking, lads, suggestions for getting back to exercise post-COVID. Um, take your time. Depending on how COVID affected you, because it affects everybody in a slightly different way. I was just exhausted. Actually, I was exhausted for about a week. Um, but then isolation period ended, and I knew my body wasn't ready for my normal exercise routine. So I just started walking. I started, obviously went back to, to judo uh, for one day, but then it was at Christmas time, so... We came back off again. Um, just take take it easy. Go walks and um, do half a program. Even just starting to say, just be very mindful. And I, I can't emphasize that enough. Be mindful of how your body feels. If you feel it's going a bit too much, just go. No, no. I'll live to fight another day. Come back two days later. Come back. Try again. See how you feel. And just keep building up one bit at a time. But natural movement is always going to be best. So walking, jogging, swimming. Um, getting out, I know you like your bike, so getting out on your bike is, is going to be good because again, it's no impact, you can get into a, a bit of a rhythm, don't go too far because um, if you do start to struggle then you don't want to have a, a, an hour's long bike ride back home uh, because you're not feeling good. And you don't want to compare yourself to the way you were pre-Covid, so sometimes when people get any sort of illness, they're in a race to get back exactly where they were previously. Just take your time getting back to full fitness, you will get there. Uh, muscle memory, if you've been there once, you'll get there again, but try not to race there. <clears throat> I'm going to give a shout out to Richard. So Richard says, I'm thinking about joining, uh, but due to knee pain and 15 months of lower back pain, but I need to do something, but I'm in pain with nearly nearly have time to move. So Richard, um, we, again, we've had hundreds of members with various issues and ailments, and what we usually say is just get stuck in and get in a good routine. Because we... We have a kind of a, a try trifecta approach, <laughs> a three way approach. Um, so it's not just the exercise, we get the nutrition and the mindset. And what we found is that once we get solid mindset principles, things like incorporating proper stretch routines, relaxation, meditation, you start naturally taking better care of yourself. So you implement these. And when tied in with the exercise, we can make modifications for you. So if there's certain movements you can't do, that's okay. We'll find other ways to work those muscles. You'll get fitter. You'll feel better. You'll find yourself doing more. And before you know it, because there's been various of our members on these streams that have said they had issues, they either don't have them now or they're far less um, severe than they were previously. So we would say just start, get stuck in, and do what you can. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um... Janet saying thank you for the triangle squat stance. It does help a lot. 
lot. Yes, in my experience, it's helped a lot, a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Just a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> uh, Rob's on. Says, cheers, mate. So, hey, Rob's hey, on. Hey, Rob. for Rob. Whoosh. Good to see you, Rob. Oh, boy, I can't really see you. It's good to hear your name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Buck Wiggler said... <laughs> Buck Wiggler. <laughs> to be fair, they're asking decent questions. <laughs> Just a funny name. I love YouTube for that. Uh, thanks for the tips. You were correct on the tension headache. So, yeah, that sounds like this is all tight. Never thought to carry or hold the weight, and I'll be aware of my position. Um, not just moving. So, yeah, if you're getting the tension headaches too, that's all this is tight. So, even think about adding in the next stretch as well. Rotation through the upper bodies, you know, yeah. like I was saying earlier for someone else, room six stretches, all this kind of stuff. Try and release all that. Just remember that your trap muscles that go over <coughs> your neck, they come out to the shoulders and then they come down. So they come down from your neck to your shoulders and then down again. It's almost like a big diamond muscle. Uh, like this. There are different muscle fibres, different parts to it. And technically you could say that it's a different muscle, but it's not. It's, it's the same muscle. So although stretching out your neck, actually stretching out your, your upper back as well. Just creating that movement um, in your body is going to be really important. Was it a couple of months back, remember I did that stupid... Uh, we were on a live, and it was my own bloody fault. Like I was on a live and we'd been... Uh, recently I'd been demonstrating years ago for building up the neck muscles, I used to do a really stupid exercise that you shouldn't do called head planks basically and then we're on a live and I was winding someone up because one of our members, Susan actually when she first joined us, um, she couldn't do a plank at all so we started off with a plank against an elevated plank so our body's up here, feet down here and she basically worked her way down to the full plank and we were celebrating that on one of our live sessions and I made the joke, she says, well, well what do I do next? And then I can do a full plank. And I said, well, no hands. And I was just making fun, right? So she said, well, you first. And me being a smart arse, I thought, fine, I will. So I planked and put my head down. And I did it cold, I sort of just did a head plank cold. And oh, my neck was sore for about six weeks because I put too much pressure through the upper spine, which is not advised, it was a stupid thing to do. And it took six weeks, but the kind of movements I was doing in that time was flexibility for the chest, shoulders, I was getting a broom, twisting, I was doing the head stretches here and there, and this, this one was really helpful, pulling down, and when you pull down on the back of the head, you feel it right through the top of the spine, holding that one for 20, 30 seconds, took about six weeks, and now it doesn't hurt. What's funny is, um, <coughs> we do this for a living, and we're like, don't do anything stupid. Don't try and get into a position that you're not used to. Build things up slowly. Rob does a head plank. <laughs> off the cuff, cold. Oh. The other day, I decided to try a, a full lotus position. <laughs> cold. <laughs> no, no, like, I wonder if I can still do a full lotus position. I'm going to try it because I end up flashing. But full lotus position is when you're like, your cross leg, <coughs> one leg's up, then another leg comes up. I got one leg up. I can always do a half lotus. <laughs> and this is just, I just grab my leg. I was like, I wonder if I can just, I wonder if I can just force it up. Stupid mistake, my knee's been sore um, ever since. <laughs> do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> Everybody falls prey to this now and again. You just got to give you a bit of a slap and go, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> 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 and then you want to then manage it afterwards. Just try not to do these silly things that we do now and again. Um, I'm just going to give a shout out to Caroline. She says, have to run for a meeting. This has been a great first chat with you both. Uh, I will look up killercoaches.com <laughs> <laughs> She's a killer She's a killer Queen No, that's right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> If that's the right place in brackets <laughs> um, Caroline, no, that's not the right place The killedcoaches.com so I'll, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll put a wee link in there yeah, she, yeah, She's put her link in <laughs> no, she, yeah, yeah, she, she literally put the killer, killercoaches.com um, And Stephen says Salam alaikum Salam alaikum to you do you know what that means? It's basically it's a general greeting to say peace be with you. Oh, very good. Do you know what it means? I, I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a groundhog day on you there, because right? uh, you did it earlier. Yeah, I was yeah. like, so what is it? What is it? Yeah, so, so my, my neighbour's uh, Muslim, so I, got, oh. I wanted to have a greeting for him, so we were just chatting about it. And I said, how do you say, like, hello in Arabic, or, you know, he speaks like four different languages. He, he, he speaks Swahili. And I always say, like, See if somebody says something to you and they speak too fast or they say something you don't understand, you're like, are you speaking Swahili? Like, you always use that as a joke language. I didn't realise it was an actual <laughs> language. Anyway, um, and he says, actually, the most kind of common greeting is Salam Alaikum. Um, Seen says, hi from Japan. I hope I've 
It's S double E N. It might be seen or seen. Maybe. Maybe. But hi from Japan. Hello. Hello. Japanese. Um, we used to know some Japan Japanese as well. Um, Remember that time? There was once upon a time we did a, a Japanese whiskey night. Well, somebody sent us this <laughs> delicious <laughs> Japanese whiskey and. <laughs> We would decide to jump to the bottle of whiskey and we decided to get sushi, but we were absolutely terrible because where we'd normally get our sushi from, by the time we went there, we assumed it would be later in the day, all the sushi was always served around lunchtime. So we ended up there was no sushi. So we shittily got prawns. <laughs> or like and olives. Clothes and olives. So like what we do. But the whiskey was absolutely amazing. Yeah. We failed on the, on the Japanese yeah. night, <coughs> but the whiskey didn't. The whiskey the, really did. The whiskey didn't. succeeded. What was the name of that brand? Uh, I was, was going to okay. say Kobayashi. It was, it, was it, was a, it was a K something, you're right. It was a beautiful bottle yeah, as well. Yeah, really good. And the Japanese do whiskey well. Yeah. Uh, Billy's just saying he has to go. There's too much interference and he can't follow uh, fully. So I apologise about that. Um, not much we can do. Um, signal's the signal. Um, and it's YouTube they're using. So YouTube, yeah. Facebook. Was that uh, Phil? Who the fuck is Phil? Oh really? Uh, Aye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going, boys? Where the fuck is Phil? Where the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, You're never living that down, Phil. Ever. Um, Not even if there's a fire. In fact, um, if there was a fire, we'd probably be like, "Where the fuck is Phil?" <laughs> 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 no, that's funny. Uh, Brittany said, "How they from the greater state of great state of Texas?" Hit me, baby, one more time. Get it. Um, I'm probably going to start singing uh, some Texas songs. Oh, I never even thought of that. Summer sun and all that. Right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us and spending your time with us. We know your time is valuable and we appreciate that. We're um, going to slice up. This is another new thing. We're going to slice up some of the questions and make many videos for this afterwards. So if there's anything in this that you may, might find useful, we will hopefully slice up into a lot of videos and publish them over the next few days. I went like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible, terrible. Uh, again, if you have been thinking about working with us and are interested in our membership, you just need to go to thekiltedcoaches.com. All the information's there if you're interested. You can either sign up on the spot or if you're still unsure, you can book a free call with our awesome membership manager, Sharna, who can discuss everything with you. Uh, Brittany is asking, <coughs> is Scotland open to us yet? Brittany, we're always open to you. Um, I don't know what Nicola Sturgeon is, uh, is doing these days. She uh, so seems to be calling the shots, but I think uh, all the lockdowns and everything else is easing up. Um, I believe in, I've actually got somebody coming over from the States uh, in May. So things are possible. We are open. Yes. If for any reason you feel you can't get here, just, just name drop us. Just say, yeah. by the way, I know the kill team coaches. Let us they'll, they'll still be aboard. You got a passport? And just show them like a, a, wee, a text message from us. Kill team coaches asked for me. We'll <laughs> <laughs> just usher you on. That's oh, okay. Yeah, carry on. Well, these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Lots of love to you all. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.